UFP, the United Federation of Podcasts. Good morning, I'm Jason Zalagi. And I'm Chrissy DeClerc Zalagi with today's Caffeinated History with the Zalagis on the United Federation of Podcasts Network. Before we jump into our topic for today, we'd like to take a moment to thank our United Federation of Podcasts associate producers, Justin Ozer and David Willett. Without the UFP, we wouldn't be able to bring you this podcast. Listeners, we'd love to add your name to this list, and we can do that with your Patreon subscription to the United Federation of Podcasts of just $10 monthly. Also, don't forget about the Boldly Go Project, Celebrate Gene Roddenberry's centennial by sharing what gives you hope for the next century. Go to boldlygo100.org or use the hashtag boldlygo100 to show what makes you optimistic about the future. Today's topic is the destruction of Force Z. The Japanese surprise attack on the American naval base of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941 officially opened the Pacific War between the Allies and Imperial Japan. While news of the destruction of the U.S. Pacific Fleet was reported, another disaster was taking place on the opposite side of the Pacific, the destruction of the British Royal Navy's Force Z. Great Britain had and established an enormous overseas empire in Asia throughout the 19th century. British ruled India, Malaysia, British Borneo, Burma, Hong Kong, and Singapore were direct colonies, and Australia and New Zealand were Commonwealth states that needed to be protected against hostile Japanese actions. However, the dire situation the British faced in Europe, however, the dire situation the British faced in Europe and North Africa forced these Pacific colonies to be undermanned and poorly equipped. Even the fortifications that guarded the strategic port of Singapore could not effectively defend the overstretched British presence in Asia. Throughout 1940, the British and American governments and militaries drew up plans for a combined war against Japan. The U.S. Pacific fleet was based in San Francisco, California. It would not shift to Pearl Harbor, Hawaii until late 1941, and had the responsibility to hold the Eastern Pacific and protect Australia and New Zealand. The British were required to have their own Pacific squadron, guarding the Malay barrier, the waterway between Singapore and Indonesia, and the Western Pacific. Neither Allied fleet was large enough to defeat the Japanese combined fleet, but they were ordered to slow Japanese advances and not engage in a decisive battle. Great Britain and Japan had been allies in the First World War, but this relationship deteriorated during the period between the wars. Japan built an extensive military throughout the 1920s and 1930s for offensive operations to enable them to capture the vital resources for the empire. New battleships, aircraft carriers, and cruisers had been built by the Japanese before 1941, and these gave them a massive superiority against Allied defensive forces. Japan reinforced its existing garrisons as well as absorbing new territories, in particular French Indochina, as it prepared to expand its war. The acquisition of French Indochina, today's Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, brought Japanese land-based aircraft within striking distance of much of British control Borneo, Malaysia, and Singapore. The British responded to this situation by implementing the creation of Force Z, a Royal Navy squadron based in the Indian Ocean. While these ships that comprised Force Z were powerful in terms of surface warfare, they lacked a strong integrated air group to protect them from enemy aerial attack. The Royal Navy lacked additional aircraft carriers to provide this vital element. Force Z needed to rely on land-based aircraft for protection. The ships that made up Force Z included the new battleship HMS Prince of Wales and the battlecruiser HMS Repulse, as well as smaller escorts. Prince of Wales had established a reputation for misfortune earlier in the war. She and the HMS Hood had made an unsuccessful sortie to stop the German battleship Bismarck from breaking out into the Atlantic Ocean in May 1941. The disastrous battle resulted in the destruction of the HMS Hood and the HMS Prince of Wales being heavily damaged. Despite its survival, many felt that the Prince of Wales was an unlucky ship. HMS Repulse was a World War I-era battlecruiser that had been modernized with additional anti-aircraft weapons and new armor. However, even with these improvements, she was not capable of surviving determined air attacks. Force Z had only reached Singapore on December 2, 1941, and was still sorting out its support from local British Army officers. After the destruction of the United States Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, the military situation swung heavily in Japanese favor. Various Japanese naval task forces had been sailing towards targets at the same time as the Pearl Harbor Strike Force. One major Imperial Navy task force was steaming towards Singapore and British Malaysia. Force C was ordered to sail from Singapore and to disrupt any Japanese landings along the coast. Plans for British-based fighters to fly air cover for Force C were promised, but nothing materialized. 
British Admiral Sir Tom Phillips was overall commander of 4C, and it was his responsibility to sortie whether or not air cover was provided. Phillips ordered his two capital ships and four destroyers to intercept the Japanese invasion force. The ships sailed out of Singapore on December 10, 1941, and headed northward with no air cover. He was perturbed that no British fighters had been launched to cover him. Phillips maintained radio silence, hoping to surprise any Japanese task force he encountered. The Japanese naval force was not found by 4C, and Phillips ordered the ships to return to Singapore. The destruction of 4C did not come by naval engagement. Rather, it was conducted by Japanese land-based aircraft operating out of Indochina. Japanese land-based naval fighters and torpedo bombers have been launched to hunt down any British warships in the South China Sea. These aircraft were aided by the Japanese submarine I-58, which spotted Force Z on its return to base. A combination of 88 bombers and fighters launched concentrated air attacks against the British capital ships. The aircraft attacked in waves and scored multiple torpedo hits on the HMS Prince of Wales and HMS Repulse. Both capital ships were sunk with heavy losses of life among their crews. The horrific irony of this engagement was that the British fighter aircraft arrived after the Japanese had withdrawn, just in time to witness the sinking of the Prince of Wales. The losses suffered by the Royal Navy, resulting in the destruction of Force C, were catastrophic. There were no major British warships in the Western Pacific. Japanese forces were able to conduct both amphibious and traditional land assaults against British forces in Malaysia and Singapore. The British Empire would organize another naval task force in early 1942, but this group was also destroyed. The losses suffered by the British, Dutch, Australians, New Zealanders, and Americans ensured that the Japanese were able to seize all of the Allied colonies that had been targeted by mid-1942. Thanks for listening. We'd also like to thank our History with the Salagis Patreon patrons, Ed Shinever, Laura Dull, Chris Hill, and Susan Capuzzi de Clerc. Their contributions help us to have the time to research and write what you're hearing. And thank you to the creators and executive producers of the UFP Network, Ken Tripp, Tony Robinson, Brandon Shea and Zach Moore. And another thanks to Tony Robinson for the awesome show art, and Zach Tripp for the wonderful closing music. Please subscribe in your favorite podcast app and rate and review us as well. While you're there, check out the other shows UFP has to offer. We'd love to hear what you think. If you want to reach out, you can find the network on Twitter at UFP Earth, and this podcast in particular at Salagi History. That's at S-Z-I-L-A-G-Y-I History. You can also talk about any and all the UFP podcasts in our Facebook group called the Federation Council Chambers. And last but not least, you can find me on Twitter at Jason Dark Elf. And me at the Goddess Livia. That's T H E G O D D E S S L I V I A. We'd also love some topic suggestions. What would you like to learn on caffeinated history? This has been a production of MTMR Media Works.